Hey everyone, welcome to the Patreon video for July. I just want to say thank you again and welcome to all the new patrons we've gotten over the last couple months. Um, we did cross that, uh, that, that milestone, which is netting everybody else an extra uh, Ethan and Lucas comic each month, so that's pretty cool. This month I have spent working with our top tier patrons, the, uh, the Dungeon Diver tier, uh, to create their characters for the uh, kind of choose, your, choose our adventure uh, storyline that we're going to be starting next month. So, uh, so that's been pretty exciting. Um, I'm going to show that off pretty soon. The The characters are finished and we're ready to kind of dive into that next month. And, and uh, I'm certainly super excited to see how that goes. So we'll have more on that soon. Uh, we do have a bunch of great questions this month. Uh, so I'm going to dive right in uh, and try to answer all of them. Uh, first up, Kaseix wants to know, uh, will we be seeing more of the original CAD characters like Zeke and Lila uh, in the new analog and D-pad continuity as regular characters? Uh, instead of brief guest characters um, and and I you know I don't want to give away I can't give away like plot points and stuff like that um, but I can say yeah uh, I can say that you will be seeing more of Zeke and more of Lila and and maybe even a couple of other uh, characters as well Zachary asked um, with all of the alternate storylines do you think you'll be able to get back to what started it all at some point jokes about games Okay, so this is a sentiment that I see once in a while. Uh, you know, people with this uh, this this concept that it that at any point in the last seventeen years, uh, Control Alt Delete has been strictly about games. Um, I don't remember this period of time to which you're referring to. So, uh, you know, out of curiosity, really quick, I did a little experiment or uh, you know a, a a little research. So I went back to the first three months of Control Alt Delete. And I, and I counted up how many comics I did in those three months and how many of them were directly related to gaming in some way. And then I looked at the most recent three months of the comic, counted up the number of comics I've done and how many of those were directly related to gaming in some way. And by that I mean like they make a direct reference to a video game. They're either entirely about them or there's a joke like mentioning a video game somewhere in the comic strip. So here's what I discovered. In the first three months of the comic strip, um, I drew 52 comics, 14 of which were video game related. Okay? That's 26.9% of the comics in the first three months were directly video game related. Now, of the last three months, I've done 39 comics 16 of which were directly video game related, which amounts to 41%. So again, in the first three months of the comic, only 27% of the strips I did were directly jokes about video games. Whereas in the past three months, 41% of the comics I've done were directly referencing or joking about video games. So, you know, and, and I don't doubt that you could go to different points in my archive and you could find maybe a stretch of months, uh, you know, where like almost 100% of the comic strips were not about video games or almost 100% of the comics were about video games. But the point is, at no point have I, was there ever like this mythical period of time where like Control-Alt-Delete was strictly a comic strip about video games. If anything, I have always considered it a comic strip about gamers, people who play video games. And so while gaming is a big part of that, um, that's, not, that's not all it is because even people who love video games do other things. Like we watch movies and we have relationships and we see other things in the world that, you know, it's, it's just this notion that, that the, the control alt delete ever started out as this sort of like very strictly, uh, you know, gag a day video game comic strip is is erroneous i think and i don't know if you're just misremembering or if you're thinking of a different comic but that's never just that's never been what i did so i, I don't know how to answer that uh you know a, a question about you know going back to where it all started and just doing uh you know strips about video games because that's just not how it's ever been edward asks uh given the popularity of the comic series have you given any thoughts about creating comics each weekday instead of three times a week? Um, <laughs> I kind of already do that, Edward. Um, you know, I do 
three comics a week for the website. So that's roughly 12 comics a month uh, that go up on the website. I'm currently doing two analog and D-pad comics for patrons. So now we're up to 14 comics a month. I do four StarCaster pages for my other patrons. So now we're up to 18 pages a month. I also do the comics for the patron-only storyline, which previously was that you know cameo thing and going forward will be the um, choose your own adventure sort of thing. So that's like minimum two comics a month. Now we're up to 20 pages a month. So if you consider that there are four weeks in a month and, and you're asking me about doing uh, you know one page every weekday, so five weekdays, 20, 20 days out of the month, well, I'm doing 20 pages each month, you know, and, and and that's not even taking into account the the other stuff that I'm trying to work on, like putting the books together, uh, you know, working on other projects like a visual novel or a uh, board game, doing the wallpaper that I have to do for patrons, doing stuff like this video, and of course, finding some time in all of that to, to actually spend time with my family and see my kids and, and take days off so that I, they can have me as well. So to answer your question, no, I have given zero thought to adding any more to my plate right now because I'm just about maxed out. Any more than this and I might either burn out or I'm just gonna fail to deliver, which is which is not something I ever wanna be doing. I don't ever wanna not be fulfilling my obligations. Byron asks, uh, is there any plans to continue the Starcaster series? Uh, most certainly, in fact, we are currently continuing it. Uh, there is a patron that I have up, uh, you know, specifically to fund uh, the creation of the Starcaster series. We are up to page, I want to say, as of this month, we're at page 11 of um, issue number seven. So there are, we're getting four pages a month over there and, and that is trucking along. So you can you can go subscribe to that patron uh, for $2 a month and check that out. Or you can just be uh, a little bit more patient because uh, down the road, those, those issues will still be put up on the website for free. Um, just the, the patrons get to um, you know, see them first and they get to vote on the, uh, the choices. Ruben asks, uh, what was in Scott's room? Uh, for that answer, you're going to have to go back in the archive a little bit. Uh, I want to say that I addressed that in like the summer or early fall of 2011. I did that storyline. There was, there was a good two to three month long storyline there where Ethan finally got into Scott, Scott's room and found out what he was up to. Um, so you got to go back to the, into the archives, man. Cause I did, I did address that. I did a whole storyline on what was in Scott's room. And finally this month, we have a great question from, uh, Neri Oral, um, who asks, do your kids read your comics? Uh, if yes, what do they say about them being used as source material? If not yet, how do you expect them to react when they eventually do? Um, so for the first part, do your kids read your comics? No, they're three years old and five years old. Uh, the five year old is, is doing pretty well with reading, but it's going to be quite some time before I allow him to read uh, my comic strip. Uh, so they say nothing about it um, as far as the second part of your question. As far as the last part of the question, how do you expect them to react when they eventually do read it? Well, here's the thing. I think that, so if they start reading my comic, by the time they get to the point where they're seeing their younger selves represented in the, in the strip, they're going to have a pretty good idea of, of what my sense of humor is. Uh, I mean, they already have a pretty good idea of what my sense of humor is because I troll them all the time. Like, I'm always joking around with my kids. We're always playing pranks on each other. So they kind of know, like, you know, but again, uh, you, you know, take a look at, like, you know, what that representation in the comic actually is. I mean, it's nothing that's really all that specific to them. I use my likeness. I use, a, a, you know, a general, their general likeness. Um, because, it, because this is a comic strip. When I do those comic strips, it's a comic strip about, it, it's personal. It's about an observation I've made or, a, you know, so, like a, something that I've thought about. And so I choose to keep it personal by having it be me and my family in the situation. But if you look at any of those comics, I could easily swap out just generic, a generic dad and a generic kid. And, and the joke would be the same. There's nothing actually specific about my children in those strips so i imagine when they eventually see it you know like i said they'll they'll be recognizing that i pretty much draw from all of my experiences for the comics that i do um you know the the gaming comics i i do they're about the games i'm excited about or playing at the moment and um you know i've done comics uh, about me and my wife in the past i've used her as a character i've used myself as a character um and so i kind of expect that they will 
recognize the, the the kind of border between you know reality and fiction and that obviously none of those or most I should say most most of those events don't happen like exactly as I portray them in the comic they happen in some form and then I and then I mold that observation into a three or four panel strip you know suffice to say it should go without saying uh, I did not actually chuck my child onto the school bus because I was so excited about getting back to the house to play uh, Spider-Man on the PS4 but you know what that conveys is obviously that I was like super excited for him to just go to school so I could have the day to myself um, you know that kind of thing and I and I think that they'll understand that you know I don't know when they'll start reading my comic I'm gonna try and keep them reading it from reading it uh, for as long as possible it's inevitable that they will eventually become you know more curious about what it is I do for a living I mean they see me doing it but I don't think they necessarily connect them they, they don't even know what the internet is yet so uh, they don't necessarily connect, you know, what I do with a finished product. They see me here in my office working. They see me drawing things. But um, eventually they'll they'll put two and two together. They'll become aware. And uh, I, I, I'm not really worried about a negative reaction from maybe seeing a representation of... Uh, uh, of themselves in the comic okay that is it for questions uh it was we had some great questions thank you so much for uh for for asking those and um i hope i was able to provide you with uh some insightful answers we got a big month coming up in august because like i said we're going to be launching this this new patron storyline i'm uh, i'm thoroughly anxious i'm thoroughly nervous excited all of it you know just because this sort of thing where like it's you know it's not entirely something I've never done before. Obviously, I've drawn things before and I've written things before and I've, you know, but just, mesh, you know, meshing all of these different aspects together is is a bit new. So I'm uh, I'm very excited just, just to finally get underway with it. I've been thinking about it for close to a year now. Uh, we're finally about to start and I just want to get into it. I just want to get into it and see what it looks like, see what it feels like, uh, start figuring out all the little details that you can't really plan for or imagine and and stuff like that and so you know thank you guys for for being here for it thank you for your support uh i hope you guys enjoy it i hope you're looking forward to it as much as i am i have had just as a side note i have had people asking um if there was a way to pledge to become like a lesser character in that particular storyline right now i'm going to say no uh, I just, like I said, I just want to focus on getting this thing rolling and, and figuring out the boundaries of it and what my monthly kind of workload looks like this way and, and that sort of thing. Da a little bit down the road, once I'm more comfortable, once we, we've built up some steam and, and things are underway, um, I will certainly consider trying to find a way to, you know, work, let more people be worked into, uh, you know, the strip as far as far as like maybe a bad guy or a, an NPC or a, a very small cameo. Um, but right now, like I said, it's just, uh, I'm maxed out. So I got to just focus on what I have to, what you know, what I have to do and, and make sure I get it done. And then, uh, you know, down the road, I'll see what, what sort of wiggle room I have. All right. Thank you guys again for watching. Thank you for being my patrons. We'll see you next month.